Uh, so the accidental iron farm is still in operation. We are still on cartographer 1.13. Hello everybody, this is Theron. Welcome to my Graphland party. And we've got a few iron golems here. We'll have to take care of them when the sun goes down. Which is, will be a little bit. But we got some stuff to take care of today. Why do we hear chickens? Uh, why are there chickens all over my base? Okay. I bad. I wonder if any of them have triggered this and gotten down and gotten all the way down the ladder. Okay, that's weird. Clearly somebody came by and visited. How are you? I am doing okay. I think. Um, stone. I need stone. I need... I need a full shulker box full of stone. Like this. I'll take that. I'll take that. Uh, I also need some obsidian. So, I haven't been on in a while. I had a episode go up last week. And that was... Um... <clears throat> <laughs> oops, oops. Hi, Mr. Chicken. <laughs> you're you're gonna be stuck there forever. I should name you. Um interesting. Okay. Whoa. Aw. Poor chicken just just uh, suffocated, I think, at that block. Or drown? No, they can't drown. Huh. Oh, well. So I guess the chicken problem will take care of itself. But I'm wondering if there are a bunch of eggs out of the bottom down here. No, not that I see. Okay. Well. Into the nether. So I was, I was about to start saying something, I think. Um, I got distracted by chickens. 247. Oh, yeah, because that's, uh, put it right there. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so I haven't been on in a little while. Been a little busy. Um, I had a video last week that it was all pre scheduled and planned and all that stuff. Um, and, and then I went off to Maker Fair. Oh, interesting. Chiseled stone bricks. I don't remember putting those there. Not a bad idea, though. So we need to dig another tunnel. Um, Barb makes things has been exploring out in the world and has found herself a little beachfront property that she wants to develop. And there's a portal out there. And it takes... I can't remember what she said. It was something like... I don't know, a couple dozen rockets uh, to get out there by flying and of course by so it's, it's a little ways out and of course when uh, it's in the the new sort of 1.13 generated area which is cool, um, but it is it's, it's a ways out there and um, of course she takes a while to get out there and she's also generated a bunch of train in between here and there. And um, it's kind of grown the world size a little bit. So we're going to put in a portal. Uh, I don't know. I have a number here. Let's see. At the right place here. Um, ah, it's not too bad. I will not get to it on this episode, of course. But we will uh, go out and put a portal out there and then 
we will light it up and get it going. So anyway, how are you? Uh, so I was at Maker Fair, which I think I may have, t I don't remember if I talked about that or not. Um, Maker Fair, Maker Fair Bay Area is big show and tell with uh, makers, people from all over the world who come to show off their little DIY projects, which is pretty awesome. Uh, so that was that's always great and get to meet a lot of great people and show off things. I didn't uh, didn't have a whole lot of stuff myself. I have my 8-bit ukulele which was uh, which I brought, but I brought it to the last few years of Maker Fair, so it's not uh, not a new thing exactly. And um, so yeah. Uh, Barb Mix Things had a her dodecahe drum, which is a 12-sided percussion instrument, which is pretty cool. And let's get uh, some of these going. So yeah, so that was that was Maker Fair, and oh no, too far. Um, and then I came back and I was home for a couple days and then I went to Boston and Boston was for the Motern Media Extravaganza um, which is a little difficult to explain but um, it's uh, an annual concert that's put on by Matt Farley Matt Farley is a guy who has an awful lot of songs that he's written. Um, I think he's up to twenty thousand now, which is a big, which is a big number. And he, um, uh, so he does a annual show. It's like a five hour uh, extravaganza, is the right word for it. And there's a group of us who are fans and. He, uh, um, and show up he doesn't have quite as many followers as <clears throat> would be uh, would be nice because he is a rather gifted songwriter but um, so he plop 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 so he puts on the show and uh, plays again with 20,000 songs to choose from he can he can play one of these every single day and not run out of songs for quite a while um, so that was cool so he played I think it was 68 songs this year and so that was very cool and it's always fun getting to hang out with everyone and go visit uh, Boston, Massachusetts, which is cool. Uh, so anyway, that was, uh, so I did that and that was a bit of, uh, that was, that was fun. And it was, uh, it's also, it was tiring. We did a lot of stuff. So in addition, oh man, I'm going to have to move that. In addition to the show, um, there were, Sunday activities and one of those was uh, that we did a little uh, trip to uh, everyone met for breakfast the day after the show but I was on LA time so <laughs> that was not gonna happen for me because um, it was it was like a 4 30 breakfast time I don't remember it was it was early uh, so, so I didn't do that, but I met up with them after, uh, the breakfast and we all took a hike out to the location where they shot the cover of their most recent album or three albums. It was a triple album. One, two, three, four, plop. 
Uh, <clears throat> so that was that was kind of cool. There's a little bit of uh, getting to see where everything was made, uh, and then uh, and then we went over to Matt's place and we shot a little bit of his upcoming movie. Uh, he also makes movies. He doesn't just write a bunch of songs. So he's got a movie called Metal Detector Maniac that will be coming out in 2020. Yeah, that's right. Um, and so we will, and I have a role, a very small role. And it was, I was just supposed to be an extra, but it ended up, he ended up writing lines for everyone. So, uh, so I have a small, I have a line and I do, I'm not an actor. It's not not uh, something <clears throat> I in any way aspire to. Uh, so it was it was a little awkward. Hopefully I did an okay job. He seemed happy with it, but you know. Uh, and they shoot, their movies are typically done with their friends and, and family. <laughs> um, it's very low budget stuff, but he's made several movies, uh, including uh, slingshot cops don't let the river beast get you um, and uh, and others so uh, so anyway that was cool uh, and then and then he also asked me to be on his podcast and he has a podcast because well hang on a second let's just take care of this Um, so he's a podcast and he has a, he has a bad tendency at something he started very early on to change the name of his, uh, his sort of artist, change the name of the band with pretty much every release. And so it's very difficult to find his, uh, his stuff. Uh, so if you like, oh, I like I like his songs. Well, do I have to go look up um, the Matt Moturn Manly Band, or do I have to go look up Mo's Haven, or do I have to go look up the Toilet Bowl Cleaners, or do I have to go look up Paparazzi and the Photogs? It's all very confusing. So he does a podcast where he basically uh, pushes his whatever his current project is. So that's uh so he had me on his podcast uh it's oops not that's not what i wanted so that was a big that was that was a pretty big weekend um but i'm back now um not been feeling super awesome since i got back but not too surprising given that i was in a strange place eating you know having to worry about the food and all that <clears throat> but you know uh but anyway so there's that that's what i've been up to um minecraft while i was gone at maker fair actually it was minecraft's 10th birthday which is kind of cool um and seems to have sparked a little bit more renewed interest in the game. So, so there are people who uh, haven't really been active playing Minecraft on their YouTube channels are now once again playing Minecraft. Got a little ways to go. <clears throat> so that's, uh, that's kind of cool. Uh, we will see how long that lasts or how long it goes uh, Minecraft 1.14 uh, is out of course and they have updated a couple different times and now they're I don't know if they actually did the final release or it's just still on a snapshot and they'll be releasing probably soon like this week this coming week uh, but they have 1.14.2 uh, to deal with some rather nasty bugs that made it into the release because they they kind of rushed it a bit 
in my opinion, but I think I'm not incorrect in that opinion. So we'll see. Um, I don't need that egg. <clears throat> um, they have started releasing uh, snapshots, development builds of Spigot for 1.14. Um, and I haven't pulled those down yet because they're still in that early beta stage where they're like, oh, we don't recommend you use this on a server. Um, which it took them a long time to get out of that for 1.13. But until 1.14 actually resolves a lot of these issues, I don't really see a good reason to upgrade. And I still need to do some updates on the villager area so that we're prepped for it. But I don't think there's any, any issue with sort of... I don't think there's any real need to wait before we start exploring because there's not too much new terrain wise you know there's not really new biomes there's not really uh, <clears throat> new stuff that we'll, ha that we'll want to go out and explore and find after the full release comes out um, so yeah let's see what else Yeah, um, not too much else. So let's uh, let me dig out a little ways here, and we'll see if we can get the position down for this portal, and we'll see if I can get that in in time to make it in this video. Oh, shoot. That hurt. Ah. Uh, yeah, there it is. Part of the problem with the way I have uh, chosen to construct these tunnels in the nether is a besides the fact that it's dangerous because the nether is on fire um oh, i should eat it generates an awful lot of netherrack which could be helpful i need it over by the nether fortress so i can sort of create my slabs and and slab that part of the nether but ooh, generate a lot more nether rack than I am laying stone bricks. Um, so I have to keep carding out what I'm digging out. Um, but it's fine. I've got plenty of bricks. I've got plenty of stone. Um, so we'll, we'll get there. I'm not very far along. Still got quite a ways to go here, but I thought about something that we can talk about. Oh, hello. More lava. Uh, so yeah. Magic Castle update. I am... do not have a new audition date scheduled yet. I think I need to follow up with them um, and figure out when that's going to be. Assuming that they'll allow me to audition again. I'm supposed to meet up with a couple of the members uh, to go over stuff, but they've all been traveling. I think I talked about that uh, in the last episode, so that hasn't happened yet. Um, hopefully that will. And then, uh, so at this point, I think there are auditions. They normally do auditions on the first Monday of the month, which means... There would be auditions tonight, but since I'm not scheduled, that obviously isn't going to happen. So, um, I'm thinking early July, maybe? We'll see. I don't know. I don't know. I think I'm... 
I, I think I'm prepped to a point where I could go in and, and do it um, and be successful because really I think I, as I think I've said I really think the criteria is that I'd just be able to go in do three or four magic tricks without screwing it up and I think I can do that um, and so that being the case I, I think I can deal um, <clears throat> I would prefer to sort of make it a little bit more skillful make it more of a you know actual show presentation sort of thing but I don't know that that's necessary at this point um, and oops dang it put you there and you go there Blop. Um, <clears throat> so so I think I just need to sort of let that go and I can sort of work on that for other times, I guess. Not that I ever really perform magic much. It's just kind of a, but anyway, um, sort of magic adjacent, uh, having to do with playing cards. I've been, I've been buying and collecting playing cards, uh, since I started getting prepped for the whole magic castle thing. And primarily because I was looking for cards that I feel fit my style and that I can use. And in playing around, whoops, in playing around with them, I realized that some of the things that people get a little obsessed about and for playing cards, which is like the sort of the way they feel and the way they handle. Which I never entirely got. Um, I think I totally understand now. Uh, so I have developed favorite cards and an appreciation for some of the cards that collectors are really gaga over. Uh, and one of those is a little cards that are somewhat legendary amongst collectors. They're called Jerry's Nuggets. Um, and is from Jerry's Nugget uh, Casino in North Las Vegas. It's a little north of the Strip, um, and they they have kind of an interesting story to them, which of course makes it all the better. Uh, the the story goes that uh, the casino had these cards uh, printed up in 1970. Um, so what, almost 50 years ago and got a whole truckload of them delivered to the casino and for some reason the casino just never used them in the in the casino never used them at the tables uh, so they went and put them in the gift shop for 50 cents a deck and you know and there they sat for decades people were would come in and buy them and they developed a little bit of a reputation for being particularly good cards um in part i think oh i can do that whoops ah it all turned around um <clears throat> in part because i think the the legend goes that they have uh sort of a finish and 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 lacquer um that can't be can't be done anymore for environmental reasons i don't know what exactly that means no one else seems to either but apparently if the united states playing card company wanted to make more of these cards they couldn't uh because they they wouldn't be able to get away with it so um that's so that's the story so so they have this sort of legendary uh handling and feel and uh, and you can't get them anymore. And in the 1990s, some collector, one collector, went and bought up all the remaining stock uh, and took it off the market. So then it, they were no longer available in the gift shop for 50 cents a deck. And they bought all remaining 40,000 decks, I guess. And they never, you know, occasionally a, a, uh, some of them will show up on in 
stores that you know sell collectible playing cards, uh, but not um, <clears throat> they are not regularly available. And on the on the secondary market, these decks, when they're in new and sealed condition, and when they are actually legitimate and not counterfeits, because there's of course a big counterfeit market for them. Uh, these decks will go for, like on eBay, if you look, these decks are routinely going for $500 or more per deck when sealed in cellophane. It's kind of crazy to do for, to pay for a deck of playing cards. Um, but they're supposed to be great. And of course, the downside to them having gotten that much inflated in value is that, uh, Anybody who spends $500 on a deck of playing cards is never going to want to open it because they're going to treat it as an investment rather than a purchase of, you know, what are supposed to be the best playing cards of all time. And then, so they, they just never open them. <laughs> so then they get even more scarce. So you never see people actually using them, or very rarely. People do, and it's kind of an ostentatious sort of display when they do. Um, <clears throat> so they've developed this sort of, you know, legendary cult following. But as I said, they just haven't been available. And the uh, the casino uh, didn't really have plans because they were such a plop the a flop the first time around. The casino never really had plans to reprint. Uh, but they have now just uh, as of yesterday when I'm recording this the news came out that they had actually uh, granted a license to manufacture the cards to a company called the Expert Playing Card Company which which is based in New York but they normally do their manufacturing in Taiwan and they have uh, a little bit of a I don't know They don't have the best reputation for the quality of their cards, even though they seem to think that their cards are good quality. Um, so I don't know how deserved that reputation is, but uh, so they are, it is their company, but instead of manufacturing in Taiwan at the factory where they normally do, they are going to manufacture these at the United States Playing Card Company, which is the company that made the decks in the first place. Uh, so they are doing kind of a second issue of these Jerry Jerry's Nugget playing cards, which is pretty cool. And they're going to be doing a Kickstarter, which will launch on July 1st, according to the website. <clears throat> so that's kind of exciting because... I like the cards, I like the design, and I like the story behind it, and I'm not uh, not super uh, keen on the whole, well let's, uh, oops, buy up a deck of cards and never open it, uh, so, so it's sort of a, well I'll never really have an opportunity to fill up my inventory again uh, to really use these cards except for now on this Kickstarter assuming they don't you know screw up the quality of the cards uh, I will be able to get some and I hope that they are regularly available after this and it's not just a limited edition you know sort of stunt that they do uh, so we will see how that works out because unfortunately there's a very large card collector market and that market is um, that actually needs to be one of this uh, there's a very large card collector market and there's a they have a bad habit of releasing a deck and saying oh here you go oh only 2500 available and then it goes out of print and then they never reprint um, and so these collector decks you know, basically it's like, oh, well, that's great and all, but I'll never be able to use these on a regular basis because if I start, if I want to like adopt a deck, I want to be able to, I want to feel that 
I can get it in the future. Replacements. Um, and so the collector decks, I have some and I enjoy them and I, you know, I, I tend to buy a few and then I keep one sealed, which is kind of dumb, but, uh, <clears throat> and then, uh, and then I'll open one to, to play with and test. And I've been doing a lot to sort of try and figure out why is it that I like this particular deck? You know, why is it that I like one deck over another? And, you know, I don't, I'm not the most skilled card mechanic in the world. Um, but I do find that there are certain decks of cards that I can deal with more easily and, and are easier to handle. Um, and so, but it's not, they're not necessarily consistent. So that was just kind of a, uh, so that was a thing I wanted to sort of figure out. So I started a, a database of playing cards. And, uh, so whenever I bought another playing card, I would sort of include what it is that they, um, uh, what their sort of marketing hype was on the card. There we go. Um, <clears throat> how they described the card stock. Because there are only really a few companies in the world that make playing cards. Um, and, and the United States Playing Card Company is the big, the big one, and they produce, you know, they produce cards, and there are people who, whoops, and there are people who are like, oh, USPCC makes the best cards in the world. I'm like, is that really true? I don't know. Because um, then there's the European sort of version, or the European company that's kind of the European equivalent of USPCC and that's called they're called Card of Monday and they make playing cards for European casinos and there are people who say oh Card of Monday cards are the best in the world I'm like well are they really they feel th thick and stiff to me but you know um, maybe that's good I don't know uh, so and there's this sort of marketing hype surrounding some playing cards uh, and their, and the stock that's used to make them. Uh, and it's this whole notion of crushed stock. And I don't know if they actually crush the playing cards. You know, if they crush the, the stock before they printed the cards or they crush the cards after they print them. I don't know. I'm like, but I have access to a a 20 ton press at Crash Space, so let's try let's try pressing some some cards. Uh, and I can indeed make them a little thinner. I don't know that they necessarily feel or work better or feel better after I've done that. And most of the compression and thickness goes away after a little bit. The cards kind of spring back, so sort of brainstorming some ideas of how to try that but my feeling was that this was all marketing hype and that in reality they don't actually crush the cards that they just use thinner paper uh, so I started measuring and so I would measure the thickness of the card how tall it is how wide it is um, and how much it weighed because the standard way of measuring sort of card weight, you know, how heavy or how heavy a card stock is, is a is a unit of that's called that's um, not a unit but a a measurement that's uh, grams per square meter. And so by taking all those things, I can actually then figure out what the grams per square meter of any given playing card is on average, because I'm measuring, I take the 52 standard cards from the deck and I, whoa, spooky sound. 
Oh, hi. Huh. Oh, boy. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> this complicates things a little bit, but it's no big deal. Anyway, so by calculating all that out, then I can sort of say, okay, how heavy is the stock that they're using for these cards? How thick are the cards? And I'm also calculating what I'm what I'm calling a density or stock density, which is if you take the paper weight and uh, and sort of figure that out per millimeter of thickness. And I think I've pretty much proven to myself, at least, that. Uh, no, they do not crush the cards uh, because the paper weight would remain the same if they did, and the sort of the thin the thickness would go down. And although there's variations on those things, uh, they don't go down by as much as they would have to in order to to uh, to make sense. So I think that um, I think that I think it's just marketing hype. Oh man! Oh, it's going to be about where that fortress is, which isn't super convenient. Okay. And I'm going to have to bridge out over lava, which is never fun. I don't have any glass. I should have some red glass. So I can make a windows. Okay. All right. Well, I don't see any ghasts nearby. And there's not too much dig in here. So it shouldn't be too bad. Let me fill this little gap in. <clears throat> so anyway, that's... Uh, that's what I've been doing. I'm very curious to see what these uh, these new version Jerry's Nuggets cards are going to be like. I have a feeling I know what stock they're going to be using based on the research that I've done recently. And if that's the case, I think it'll be fine. Uh, but I don't think, or I suspect it will not actually match the, the originals. Uh, which is may not be a bad thing. I don't know. Uh, I know a lot of people are somewhat upset about this. They're starting to be like, why do they have to do that? It's going to ruin the value of the, the old cards. And that may be true, but that's probably fine. The notion of spending $500 on a deck of playing cards that you're never going to use is a little, it's a little much. Um, so to me, it seems like, well... Oh. Whew! That was exciting. Where is he? There's no way I can hit him from here. Okay. <clears throat> anyway, um, so I think I think this kind of democratizes the uh, the Jerry's Nuggets cards a bit. It makes it so that everybody will get to use them. I you know, basically never had any hope of ever actually using these cards. Oops, careful. Uh, but now, now I will. Because I will get some as part of the Kickstarter, and I think that will be cool. So there we go. Okay, where are we at? We're at 134. Whew. Yeah, I need to get some glass, and I need to get some dye. This is a little dangerous here. I probably should get some fire potions. Okay, let me get a little bit better equipped to deal with this because I don't, I don't need to end up in that lava. And get prepped to actually build the, the portal room once I get to that spot and get it set up and lit and see if it actually links to the place where it's supposed to. 
Okay, there's a lot of finishing work to be done here. I have to slab the floors and I have to finish the hallway and all that good stuff. But I wanted to see if this got in the right place. So let's light this thing. And then um, let's step on through and see what's on the other side. Hey. Yeah, I think this is where it was intended to go. Uh, this is Barb's. Oh, she's making an underwater base. Super cool. Oh, wow. Very underwater. Interesting. Okay. Okay, we'll have to come back here and explore a little bit. What time is it? It's middle of the day. Oh, wow. Whoa. Accidentally started flying. Oh, wow. Just got a little beach house. This is cool. So this whole <laughs> beach area here is actually sand placed on top of sandstone. And she extended out this beach. Oh, something died over here. Zombie. Or something like that. And there's a chicken floating in the water. Which makes me wonder if... Barb was to blame for all the chickens in my base. This is a cool building. Let's, uh, let's go shoot up and fly around a little bit. We had a small problem with an area nearby here. Um, not super close, but kind of over this direction, I think. Where when we got too close to it and it tried to load, it would crash the server. Um, I don't think there was anything important out there. It doesn't seem like it. Uh, so I had to go and look in the log files, figure out figure out which uh, which chunk it was that was causing the problem and go delete the region file and regenerate that portion of the world but fortunately I don't think it uh, impacted anything that Barb was doing out here so cool so this is neat it's a new portal cool well I'm gonna go and uh, said there's work to be done I have to go finish up the hallway and everything, but very cool. So now we've got a portal. Oh, ladder. Oh, ho, 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 map area. So here's where we are. Neat. Oh, oh wow. A little couch there and a little, I don't know. This is cool. All right. Well, I think that is... Oh, oh, we can get up on the roof. And come up here. Whoa, careful, don't fall off. Very nice. And this is all 1.13 terrain. So there's dolphins and, and seagrass and kelp and all that good stuff. So anyway, there we go. Cool. Well, I hope that didn't run too long. Uh, we will see, but that is, that was our project for this, this week. Oh, uh, let's just double confirm that the portal's going to go back the other direction. Should, but just in case. There we go. Very cool. So there we are. Thank you for watching. This is Theron. In Minecraft land party and we have another portal on the server. Cool. I will see you next time. Right? Bye.